the Oklahoma Girl Scout murders. In the darkness of June 13, 1977, on the edge of a wooded campground filled with Girl Scouts anticipating two weeks of fun, three young campers were raped and murdered. Their strangled and mutilated bodies left under a tree about 100 yards from their tent. Welcome to Just Once Crime Scene, the true crime stories. Let us start. The Oklahoma Girl Scout murders took place on the morning of June 13, 1977, at Camp Scott in Mays County, Oklahoma, United States. The victims were three Girl Scouts, between the ages of 8 and 10, who were raped and murdered. One of Oklahoma's most notorious cases, the 1977 murders of Girl Scouts Lori Farmer, Doris Denise Miller, and Michelle Goose have haunted the community of Locust Grove and beyond for decades. There were four girls per tent, but tent eight was short of one girl. The girls in tent eight were Laurie Farmer, who was eight and the youngest girl at Camp Scott, Michelle Goose, who was nine, and Doris Miller, who was ten. Tent eight was the last tent in the row at Kiowa Unit. Of all the tents, tent eight was the most remote and the only one not visible from the counselor's tent due to the showers blocking the view. Laurie Lee Farmer, Michelle Heather Goose and Doris Denise Miller didn't know each other when they were put into the same tent on the first day of Girl Scout Camp in Oklahoma in the summer of 1977. But their names will be forever linked, victims of one of the most horrific killings in Oklahoma's history. It was supposed to be two weeks of fun for more than 100 Girl Scouts who arrived at Camp Scott, near Locust Grove, Oklahoma, on June 12, 1977. But sometime in the darkness of that night, an intruder entered through the back of a tent, killing and sexually assaulting three girls Laurie Farmer, 8, Michelle Goose, 9, and Denise Milner, 10. Their strangled and mutilated bodies were left under a tree about 100 yards from their tent. At 8, Laurie was the youngest girl at Kemp Scott in Locust Grove, but she was unusually mature, the oldest of five girls in her family. Shy Michelle was 9 years old and had asked her mum to look after her plants while she was away. Denise, as she preferred to be called, was a 10-year-old straight student who was planning to attend camp with her friends. When they pulled out at the last minute, Denise wanted to pull out too, but her mum persuaded her to go on her own. On the first day of camp, it poured with rain, and the girls were sent to their tents to write letters home. All the girls were given the task of writing a letter to someone at home, as there wasn't much else to do given the storm. Laurie talked about how much fun she was having. I've met two new friends, Michelle Goose and Denise Milner. She wrote to her parents. Eight-year-old Laurie Farmer, ten-year-old Michelle Goose and nine-year-old Denise Milner had written letters home that night before going to sleep in the tent they shared at Camp Scott. Laurie and Michelle had penned up it, excited notes about friends they had made, while Denise's missive home reflected her deep homesickness. Emma, hey, um, I don't want to stay at camp for two weeks, she had written. I want to come home. The three girls were in tent eight, the furthest away from the counselor's tent. Being the first night at camp, there was a lot of excitement, and counselors Carla Weilheit and Dee Elder had to get up a couple of times during the night to ask giggling girls to quieten down and go to sleep. But it wasn't just the sound of giggling that the counselors heard. They heard a low, guttural sound, something in between a growl or a moan. Coming from the woods, around 6 p.m., the girls ate dinner and then made their way back to their tents due to a large storm which began around 7 p.m. The first night there were unsettling noises coming from within the trees. These were described by camp counselors as something like a low croaking sound, similar to a bullfrog. There were also strange lights appearing amongst the trees. Camp counselors were said to have flashed their flashlights at the mysterious light in the woods and it would disappear, only to reappear once they stopped flashing the flashlights. There were also reports from Girl Scouts in other units claiming they heard a girl screaming during the night, but they either did not tell their counselor from their unit at the time, or they did tell their counselor at which point they were told not to worry. It was assumed that if there was a problem the counselors from whichever unit it was coming from would take care of it. Carla, who was 18 years old and on her first night as a counselor, thought it must be an animal. As she walked towards the sound, it stopped. When she walked away, it started again. She was too frightened to investigate further. Carla may have been hearing the final moments of one of the girls as she walked back to her tent, you know. When I look back at it now though, I regret. I have guilt that I didn't. Didn't go there. Law enforcement scoured the wooded area, looking for clues. 
Near the bodies, investigators found a red plastic flashlight with a piece of a garbage bag taped over the lens. The newspaper was stuffed inside to keep the batteries from rattling. After a tip from local squirrel hunters, officers descended on a nearby cave where they found a roll of masking tape with a piece of plastic stuck to it that matched tape found on the flashlight at the crime scene. Suspect. Understanding evil requires looking closely at the suspected perpetrator. Hart was a Cherokee and a star high school football player raised by a single mother. He had married young and had a son, but his wife left him when he first got into trouble with the law in 1966. That year, he pled guilty to charges of kidnapping and raping two pregnant women in Tulsa. His family members and community supporters claimed that Hart had only confessed to the charges because he had thought he would have been given suspended sentence since the two women were with him willingly and hid in his trunk from their husbands. He served three years before being released on parole. Soon after he was caught burglarizing Tulsa apartments, he went back to jail and then escaped in 1973, supposedly living in the wooded Ozark Hills around Camp Scott, close to where his mother lived. Jean Leroy Hart, who died in 1979 while in prison on unrelated charges, was acquitted for the slayings two years earlier of Laurie Farmer, 8, Michelle Goose, 9, and Denise Milner, 10, at Camp Scott near Locust Grove. 44 years ago, Jean Leroy Hart, Man acquitted in 1977 Girl Scout Murders case dies of heart attack in prison. Hart denies killing girls. On June 4, 1979, he collapsed and died after about an hour of lifting weights and jogging in the prison exercise yard. It was later found out at the vasectomy he had apparently came loose. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. God bless.